Hi Rita, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Derek? Good, good. Lovely to see you. Where, where are you speaking from today? Uh, from my home. I live by Chicago. I'm not exactly in Chicago. I'm a sub suburbanite, but it's the closest suburb to Chicago, so I feel like I'm almost in a city. How, how did you get involved in glass? Because I read from your bio on your website that you studied something entirely different before you got involved with glass. I wasn't born in USA. I live here now. It's my home. I've lived most of my life here. But I was born in a country that was called USSR, which no longer exists, um, on the territory of the country that's now called Ukraine. And um, growing up in USSR was an interesting experience. It's a country of atheists. Um, literally, atheism is the religion of the country. And there was no such thing as seeing stained glass in person. It just didn't exist. So when we escaped the country, which we were lucky to, as refugees, among other things, um, in 89, we were passing through Austria because that was the route uh, for going out and we got stuck in Vienna for like a few days. And here we are, like we have no money, like you have no money, you can't go anywhere, like all your pennies go for food, but you can walk around and you can look at things and churches are free. So the very first church I walked into, of course it's grandiose, I've never been to a church before, it's amazing, like I walk into the the sacred space and you know it immediately looks it shifts your um energy it shifts your vibration obviously because it's designed to do that so i walk in and i turn around and i see this huge rose window right behind me and it's like all i remember is i could not move like because my religious um education at that point was non-existent so like i had no idea why it was there what it symbolized what it was for but it was a very tangibly and obviously something that was so amazing to me I had to explore it more. So when we came here I had to go to school. I picked a very practical field to study. It was math and computer science and honestly I've been a programmer and doing it full-time ever since. But with my very not very first paycheck but very first paycheck I could spend which was like three months after I started working and I moved out and had my own place I went and took a class in how to make a stained glass panel. Do you know, there's so much to unpack in what you've told me that, that, that this is incredible. I mean, the, the, the whole refugee part of your life, that traveling across Europe is, is a conversation in itself. How did it develop from that initial um, uh, set of classes that you attended? I couldn't even imagine that I would be doing something like that for a living at the time. Uh, and yes, I've continued with my full-time job. And as a matter of fact, I still have my full-time job. <laughs> I've been seeking out mentors and masters who do their work in a way that I want my work to look. Not necessarily because I want to copy it, but they know something that I need to know. Um, uh, so Sylvia Lux is a very dear, dear friend. I love, love to call her a friend. She's definitely a mentor. I absolutely love her style, her technique, and the essence of her work. And of course, she is an absolute master when it comes to glass painting. Um, so I took some classes with her. I took a class with uh, Indra McCraw, who now works for Johnson Studios in California. She is great. She's fantastic. Also impeccable technique. Very sweet. Um, I took a class with Paul Messing. I love what Judas Schechter does. I would love to take a class of her. I see your early work is, is stained glass and you have migrated to using a lot of fused glass. And do you predominantly work with fused glass now or do you still work with lead and copper foil as well? Both, actually. I don't think that one is better than the other. You just pick the approach that works for whatever you need to build. Um, the last panel I did is all painted stained glass. It's fairly traditional. The only thing I did there, which I didn't do before, because in every piece that I make, there's always a technical challenge. And like, and that's kind of why I find glass so fascinating, because I'm an engineer. Like, I, I do my job and I like my job because I'm an engineer. So I was trying to invent something that I'm sure exists already, is how to use transparent enamels 
to have that edged effect. And it took some experimenting, but I figured it out because I couldn't find any reference online how to do it. And I'm sure I'm not inventing anything new. But to me, it was like, oh, this is great. I can use it everywhere. So instead of doing fused glass, as I was originally going to do for this glass to control the color, I just used the transparent enamels from Roche, and it worked. So I didn't have to do the fused. Um, the piece behind me is all fused glass. Um, so the image is made with fret, and then the black is added with the paint. Just out of interest, what kind of mediums do you use with your with your enamels? Your what 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 are your mixing mediums that you use? So my preferred medium is uh, propylene glycol. So I paint, I, I do wet paint. That's all I do. And for wet paint, I do prefer uh, propylene glycol because it's not as sticky as Roche water-based medium. I mean, they all have their purposes. Again, propylene glycol is awesome when you have to do small detail and you have to have your paint like stay wet for 30 minutes so you can manipulate it. Once it's dry, once it's, once it's dry, it's, you know, you're stuck. Like if it's not dry the way it is, just wipe it off and do it again. Uh, Water-based medium is good if you have to have thick application. And this is something that was very useful in, um, in transparent enamel application. So the first le le uh, layer that I did just for the base color uh, was done with um, enamels, um, mixed with lavender oil because it gives really smooth even coverage but in order to actually add the color on top i had to put my mask on so you know you put your mask you cut out whatever you don't need and then i mixed the same enamels with the water-based medium and then i could just like take the spatula and put it on you know and blend whatever needed to be blended but you get a way thicker application that way and because it's sticky it sits it doesn't flow so that's very useful as well. What I love about your work is that, that intensity of color, those lovely sort of sea anemones and the, 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 the coral. There's a, tr and there's a, um, a limited color palette as well. You have a very kind of limited color palette, which really makes the colors pop. They're, they're absolutely amazing. Do you exhibit your work? What do you do with your projects once you've completed them? Well, it depends on a project. Um, some projects are commissions. Um, I did a project with a local school which is one of my favorite pieces. Not because it's the most fabulous piece that I made, that I made but it was a very interesting experience. I have like three series that are ongoing. One is the, what's called When I Was a Mermaid. It's about the underwater creatures. Because I'm in my past life, which was about 10 years ago, I was a diver. So I'm just fascinated, was fascinated and still am with all the little things that live underwater that we never see. Um, as I said, I do, I do commissions. I have done some portraits. Um, I've done commissions for a few companies and, um, and of course there are personal, like there's personal work. Like the series I'm doing right now is really bizarre and fun to me. I'll see where it goes. It, it's about ancient heroes and gods, well, goddesses for now in our contemporary settings. So I have Medusa and Athena being worked on. And one is called the domestic incident, and that is with Medusa. And the other one is mansplaining, and that involves Athena. I, it, you know, it, it's just it's just something that happens, and that goes in parallel with a much more serious um, work, which involves Holocaust and um, racial inequality and the questions of justice. So I kind of sort of have to mix them up, otherwise I'll go either to a very dark place, or you know, things will just start disintegrating. You mentioned one of your favorite projects. Do you do you have um, perhaps three favorite projects that we can talk about? Do, do you, uh, are there three projects that you want to particularly highlight today? Um, so I did mention one. I did it for a local school. They wanted me to be an artist in residence. Um, they were looking to do something with the kids and they looked at the local artist and they went, stained glass, we're going to do stained glass. So and they invited me over and we had this initial conversation. And I ended up we ended up doing an homage to Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, so the best part of the project wasn't necessarily the fabulous windows that we made for the school that were actually installed, um, but the fact that I became totally obsessed with teaching kids glass, and I decided that um, I should be teaching high school. Uh, but I have decided that I have to do a real public arts project with high school children. And I started looking for opportunities, and lo and behold, um, a um, 
community center, which is like a block away from my house, uh, was being redone. So then the city decided that instead of redoing the community center, they're going to build a new one. And there was an opportunity for um, public art. And that's my second favorite project because <laughs> uh, their budget was huge. So I've designed this 40 by 11 foot huge piece of art. And of course, I wasn't invited to work on it. So here you I weren't. am, you know, but no, of course not. Um, so now this piece lives in somebody else's home, as it should, um, in a very beautiful home with very beautiful art. And I don't feel like I wasted my time on it. So that was my second favorite piece. Your third favorite piece? Well, of course, it's the piece I'm working on now, but I can't really show it. And that piece is um, a portrait of my son, which came out of a middle of pandemic last year. I actually started working on it in summer of last year, not 2021, but 2020. Um, and it is based on a lot of things that were happening in our country. So here's the thing. You come from a country where you're not treated quite as as everybody else, simply because you were born into a specific lineage and they came to US and all of a sudden I, I fell in love and I had a child and I fell in love with the African-American man. So my child is black with the portrait of my son, which is full of color and also dark, but there is light coming through. And so built around uh, the tree, the strange fruit tree, as, uh, as Billie Holiday was singing in her song. Well, it's very something also very close to your heart. And I think that the, the best art, the, the art that, that is most meaningful is something that comes from you, from your core. Are you working towards some future exhibitions? Are you working towards some some way of showing more of your work? Or do you do you tend to sell online or to your collectors? How do you how do you position yourself moving forward? Definitely exhibits. I mean, technically what I want is I want to be like Judith Schechter, who does like amazing work and just puts it into galleries. For the most work that comes out of my studio, I, I want to like be able to look at it years from now and go, that made sense. Like, I know why that happened. Like, to not be ashamed of what I made. Looking at the portfolio of your work, you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. There's, there's, a, there's a tremendous graphic quality. There's a, there's a clear insight as to where you want to go. There's a great use of color. Um, and I'm really excited to see the type of what you're producing next, especially now that you've kind of developed this whole new love of uh, enamels and that's going to take you into a different direction. So it'll be really exciting to see how things move forward. I don't have to go and look for ideas, <laughs> just how to execute them. That's, that's more of a problem than figuring out what I'm making. Well, Rita, I've loved talking with you today. It's been absolutely fantastic to share some time with you and to learn about your discoveries in glass. I'm going to leave uh, in the comments below, in the descriptions below, details of your website so that people can get in contact with you. And thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for doing this, Derek. This was, uh, this was really lovely.